E is execution. Ideas without execution are a hobby. And I'm not in the hobby business. It's about translating it. And for us, execution is also keeping it very simple. Four steps. And actually, we do the funding model. So when I fund a new idea inside of HP, I break the funding very much like a VC into a gated funding model. The first gate is, is a market validation. You've got an idea, you think you're solving a problem, does the problem really exist? Go validate that the market really, that, 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 that there's really a market out there. How big is that market? Who's got this kind of a problem, et cetera? Now for me, we look, we're looking for ideas that have never been identified before. So if someone can bring to me a market research study and they use that as their justification for their idea, eh, reject, it's too late. Someone, if someone's already measured the market, then some, you know, I'm, 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 cause I'm not gonna be the fastest. I got an elephant here that I gotta try to make dance. You know, I can't move as fast as you guys can or as fast as any entrepreneurs can. So if I'm trailing what somebody else has already identified, I'm late to the game. Second stage, customer validation. Hook or by crook, we will mangle hardware and software together, create some kind of an experience that we can put in customers' hands and, does, and, and get the customer feedback. And this is really an important part of putting physical things in customers' hands so they can actually see it, they can actually, and then iterate like crazy, right? Third is, is we'll do a limited launch, right? Closed beta, invited beta, whatever you want to call it, we'll do a limited launch. In our case, when we say we do a limited launch, we pick a country, like, you know, China, <laughs> Japan. That's a small beta for us, right? And then the last is, if it all works out, stomp on the gas pedal, fire up the factories, we're off to the races. And there's a graduated amount of dollars that we invest at each one of those gates to fund you know, those ideas. PO, PO are two fundamental skills. One is perspective and one is observation. You have to have the ability to look and, and, and change your perspective. And the way, I th the way I like to use the example of changing your perspective is, is so what is half of 13? Six and a half, right? And this is part of the challenge in the educational system because everybody wants to come up with one answer. In the case of 13, there are a variety of different answers. So I can say six and a half. I can say six or seven, depending on rounding. I can say one and three, right? If I spelled it out, right? 13, if I did it as Roman numeral, it's 11 and 2. If I do Roman numeral horizontally, it's 8 and 8, right? And this is part of the challenge. When we get like a college intern in and we give them a problem, they will drive themselves nuts to find the one correct answer. And we all know in the real world, there's never one correct answer to any given problem. It's part of the human ingenuity to look at a variety of the answers and select the best one that achieves the ultimate outcome, whatever that outcome may be. The ability to change your perspective, remove the blinders, it, you know, be able to clear your brain of everything that's happened in the past, the general rules of the road. We always do web services this way. They always operate this way. Customers always do it, the, you know, buy this way. Customers, blah, 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 blah. It's the ability to change your perspective, look at it with fresh eyes. In some cases, you may not be able to do it with fresh eyes and you need to bring other people in. One of the things I do on changing perspective is, is every year, we, HP, we bring in about 250 college interns just into the Bay Area, not counting all the other HP facilities around the world to work inside of HP. In my team alone, it varies between eight and 12 interns working in the innovation program office every year. Of, the, of those number, I pick two, and two actually live with me at my house here in San Jose for the summer. Now, now the in, some of those interns can even think it's a good thing or a bad thing, right? Now, my kids are grown and gone. My wife is a, uh, volunteers as a camp nurse for kids with special needs during the summer, so she's gone. So I'm here in the house, in the California house by myself. <laughs> I bring the interns in, one is as part of a mentoring process, but two is part of what I would refer to as reverse mentoring, right? I'm not, hopefully not as vain enough to think that because I'm the CTO at HP that I've got the, I've got the magic answer 
to what the marketplace needs. It's my ability to look through the eyes of others to see what is interesting to them, see what's passionate for them, to see what's the new and emerging things for them. And so this has been an important part of my process to, to change my perspective because I know I can't get rid of my history, my career, so I have to look in some cases through the eyes of others and understand what that perspective is. Oh, observation. I don't read market research studies. I don't believe in sitting behind a desk and trying to understand the markets based on a spreadsheet. Typically, most weekends you'll find me standing in a Best Buy store watching customers buy our products. Now when a customer is going through the process of looking at products, et cetera, and they finally make the selection, I'll walk up, I hand them my business card, which tends to freak them out, <laughs> and then I introduce myself and say, I'm not here to change your decision, but I saw you look at these three products and you made this selection. Can you kind of give me the, the rationale as to why you chose this one over these three? And for me, that's part of my hands-on process of watching the customers. My team also is fully trained. We do in-home visits. You know, it's not going off and hiring a consulting firm to go do that. We go do that. We go sit in customers' homes. We, we do the ethnographic studies. We videotape our customers using our product, competitive products. Um, you know, we've, we've announced, or we haven't announced yet. We are sharing our information about the HP Slate product, but over the last five years, we've done extensive in-home observations. What do people read? What do people do online? What kind of content are they interested in? And that's all fed into the overall process of how we build products, you know, like the Slate. So focus, ideation, ranking, ranking being critical, execution, and then plus PO. You need both of them together. You need to have both fire plus PO, PO being perspective and that skill of observation, putting your own eyes. Customers are bad. Going to a customer and saying, what, is, what, what problem do you have? Let me solve your problem is never a good source of ideas. Very rarely have I ever had that work out. Why? Because customers don't understand what's possible. They don't even understand they have a problem. The example would be, take my mother for instance. Prior to the microwave, she, had, she would never have said, oh, I need a microwave, yeah. right? right? So she would not have been a source for Raytheon when Raytheon invented the microwave to be able to come up with that, with that idea. But once the, once the microwave was invented and it saved her like an hour in the kitchen, Ooh, man, she was all over that. Why? Because it gave her an hour back to go do something that she was really passionate about. Right? So observation is about seeing problems the customers don't even realize they have, understanding the unspoken needs and the unspoken wants. So again, ideas without execution are a hobby. Can't emphasize this enough. Lots of ideas die an untimely death because of just a sheer lack of execution. Not because the idea wasn't good, someone came up with it, right? I get these emails all the time when we've introduced something, someone sends an email and goes, oh, I had the same idea. Okay, then the only thing that lacked you from, from being successful is purely the execution. We had the same problem inside. We'll go through and go, oh, we had this idea 10 years ago. Well, so that's HP's bad then because we didn't translate that idea into execution. And I'm a firm believer that the ideas are becoming the new gold and the new diamonds. It's no longer about just the natural resources that, we have, that countries have underground. You know, how much oil can you pump out and do you have natural access to diamonds and et cetera. But it's really going to be about having a focused effort on helping the constituents within a country be participants in the creative economy, to be the source of ideas that fuel the economic growth. So there's all the information, the blog, the podcast, the Twitter feed. That's my HP email address. Feel free, albeit I will warn you. I think this morning I'm up to about 5,100 unread emails in the email box. So actually you're better off going to the podcast and clicking that button because that's a different email and therefore you get out of the, the barrage of the HP email addresses.